Well, good day, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Patrick Bigby. Thanks for joining us on this Friday edition of Weather Focus. And we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we got some activity that's heading out into the tropics as well. We'll discuss it all. But first, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like outside. It is a hot day out there. Take a look at all that haze, as you can see, out at Express Care in Sumrall. It's currently 95 degrees out there with a heat index of 108. And unfortunately, the heat is going to continue for the next couple of days. We'll break down that in your forecast with Rex coming up. Plus, we're tracking a new system in the tropics. This right here is potential tropical system number four. You can see that blo uh, blossoming of showers and thunderstorms around Cuba. We'll give you the latest on where this is heading coming up. And then finally, Nick today is going to be doing some weather explanations. A lot of you uh, have always wondered about the heat dome. Well, Nick's going to go about another iteration of the heat dome. It's called a dirty ridge. And no, it's not what you think it is. It's nothing bad, so get your mind out of the gutter, but it's actually something pretty cool, and it actually impacts the desert southwest a lot. He'll explain more in just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and show you what's happening right now in our neck of the woods. As we take a look, uh, we're going to see the heat and humidity continue over the next couple of days, and unfortunately, as we go into the weekend, heat and the seeds are going to be right at 110 to 112. And we're, of course, are watching that tropical wave in the Atlantic. But for more on how long this heat's going to last, let's start things off with Rex. All right, thank you, Patrick. We'll take a look at the uh, area right now for the forecast. First of all, a heat advisory is in effect until 7 p.m. this evening. That's every county in our viewing area. So keep that in mind. Drink plenty of fluids. If you have to be outdoors for a lot, take frequent breaks. And please just check on the elderly, make sure your pets and your livestock have uh, plenty of water and shade too as well. Your commute forecast between four and about six, 98 degrees by four o'clock, down around 94 degrees by six. It's gonna be very hot and humid on your way home this afternoon. Future cast shows I don't think we'll have any rain. And this is through, uh, this starts off about seven o'clock in the morning. We'll be in the upper seventies across the board. Now during the afternoon on Saturday, we'll be in the mid to upper nineties across the area and it's just going to stay hot for the uh, foreseeable future here in the Pine Belt. This is 6 o'clock. Sunday morning will be in the mid-70s across the area, and during the afternoon on Sunday, it will be very hot again, highs in the upper 90s, and that's a look at the forehead. Thanks, Rex. Let's take a look at the national picture for the drought monitor. Well, okay, let's take a look at the coastal marine forecast. Of course, you know, if you're looking for an excuse to kind of cool off, right, we've got plenty of those high temperatures, plenty of humidity, and if you want to cool off and hit the beach, this is what the picture is looking like for your upcoming weekend, right? Of course, for Biloxi all the way down through Florida, those 90s are certainly going to be ruling the atmosphere here. You can see 92, 94, all those seem to be a favorite there throughout very various conditions, right? Some of those isolated to maybe even scattered at times thunderstorms, especially during the afternoon, right? We've seen, even though things have been fairly quiet activity wise here in the Pine Belt, we haven't had a lot of thunderstorms in a few days. Some of those portions over in the Emerald Coast and these other areas that you see here have seen a little bit of those isolated thunderstorms. So we can expect some of that activity to continue throughout the region. Of course, the water temperatures are going to be toasty. Remember, hurricane season, well, warm gulf, if you're a fan of a warm gulf, there you go. You get to enjoy those high 80s, maybe even low 90s if you're in a particularly shallow coastal lagoon, if you will, rather than the Gulf of Mexico. It all depends kind of on depth and, of course, the air temperature. If you can get a really shallow lagoon, never underestimate how warm some of them can be. And if you're a fan of the warm water, there you go. Now, let's take a look at your uh, risk for some of those rip currents, right? Of course, we're looking pretty good here. By and large, all those yellow flags all around here from Mobile Bay, Dauphin Island, the folks over there in Alabama, stretching all the way to Apalachicola, right? Now, keep in mind, though, you do have that medium risk stretching from roughly right around Destin, maybe just east there as you make your way towards the 30A. And then, of course, as it you make your way towards the bend here, towards Apalachicola. You just got to keep that in mind there for those rip ties. Remember, even on a fair weather day, if there's nothing going on in the Gulf, no tropical system, nothing else, you know, thunderstorms, nothing, right? You can have a fair weather day and still encounter a rip current. So make sure to plan accordingly for your beach visit there during the weekend. Now, let's take a look at the tides, right? Of course, we do have a waning crescent for our moon phase at this time to the point that it's a very slight crescent, right? It's almost gone to the point it'll be a new moon and when you have a new moon that means you basically don't have any moon to see it's still up there it just uh, took a break if you will right 
But let's take a look at Bay St. Louis and other portions across the Mississippi coastline here. Looking good. All that tidal range ranging between 2 and 3 feet there for our locations. Bottoming out late tonight, 8 or 9 p.m. And then, of course, we rise with our crest in store for the late morning as you approach lunchtime for tomorrow. But in the meantime, let's toss things over to Patrick. Patrick, what do you got? Yeah, we're still tracking the tropics out there. Of course, we're watching this new system and the Hurricane Center upgraded uh, Invest 94L to potential tropical system number four. It doesn't have all the, uh, the classification needed for a full-blown tropical system, but it's close enough that they need to start issuing watches and warnings because it is expected to move into portions of west, uh, southwestern Florida as we go into the weekend. They can start seeing impacts as early as 7 p.m. tomorrow as it moves through the keys right now winds are at 30 miles an hour it's sitting uh, just offshore of the southeastern part of Cuba and pressure is at 10 12 millibars moving west northwest at 16 it's expected to make landfall uh, somewhere here into uh, the western half of Florida over here around Tampa or into the Big Bend area of Florida this should steer east of Apalachicola east of Panama City east of Destin and obviously it is not in a, a, gonna be a threat to us but we will see this making it its way up to a 65 mile an hour tropical storm before it makes landfall. Tropical storm watches and tropical storm warnings are already in effect. Basically, you can see around uh, Tampa down towards Fort Myers and all the way down to Naples. Then you got a tropical storm warning and then tropical storm watches are in effect for the Keys as of now. And as we go into the next several days, this will move slowly. You can see that circle right there. That would be the area of low pressure. It's going to dump a lot of heavy rain and then it'll move across Florida and into the uh, Atlantic waters just off the coast of Georgia and into the Carolina. But what the Carolinas, but what is actually steering this system away from us? Well, it's that heat dome, that heat dome that we have been talking about for the last couple of days. It's sitting out here off towards the west, and this system has to be steered away from it. So basically, this is acting as a roadblock. And what it's going to do is move between this heat dome and the Bermuda High into this little weakness right here. And so Florida is in that weakness area. And as you can see, those wind particles are going to steer it northward towards the Carolina. So that's why we're not anticipating this moving into our area. It's because of the weakness there in between the two areas of high pressure. This will most likely get a name and we are expecting it to become Debbie. Uh, and that would be the fourth name on the list into the tropics. Thanks, Patrick. Of course, let's take a look at how we're doing in terms of rainfall so far. Of course, you know, when it came to this summer as a dramatic improvement, a more uh, kind of shift to regularly scheduled summer programming, right? In terms of rainfall, we're doing good there. So, of course, let's see how the numbers stack up for so far. Now, this is July. Remember, of course, for July so far, of course, if we look at some of the data here, this is actually our uh, data from August. You notice no measured rainfall has been measured for August so far, right? Now, so far, if you take about, if you think about the average, right, so far the average is about 0.15, that's 15 hundredths of an inch, right? But when it came to July, we had that wet spurt in July that helped us recoup and help us bring us back up to par, right? Of course, for your total so far for the year, though, you notice that while we are behind in terms of August, we're still ahead for the year. And that was definitely ringing true during the course of July, right? Where we started kind of behind, but we had that wet stretch to help us kind of come back. And of course, we rise back well above where we should be for the mark so far for the year so far. Now, let's take a look at the national picture for the drought monitor, right? You notice that, of course, we don't have a lot of those really uh, yellows, oranges, uh, a lot of those vibrant colors populating in the deep south. If you look at the pine belt, we don't have anything all, at all. However, some of the closest conditions, some of those moderate to even severe droughts, little pockets there darted across portions of Alabama just on the other side of the Mississippi state line. And then, of course, some of the worst drought areas like West Virginia and areas approaching the capital region there, the Potomac if you will, and even areas out in the Rio Grande Valley approaching Mexico and extreme southern New Mexico in the United States there you can see where some of those drought conditions are occurring and even Billings, you know, the other day Patrick was talking about some of those really high temperatures, the heat dome if you will, of course we expect some of those high temperatures in the desert southwest, Las Vegas, Palm Springs, Tucson, but Billings was also experiencing some of those really high temperatures so I'm sure between low water and some of those drought conditions not really doing them any 
favors at this time. Now let's take a look at the national picture, right? You notice, of course, with the radar, right, you know, a lot of that moisture concentrate. We've got a system there over in the Great Lakes kind of making its way, drifting eastward across areas like that. And of course, as we make our way into the national forecast, let's take a look at what Patrick has to say with that. Alrighty, thank you so much for that, Nick. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening out there with the national forecast this afternoon. Nick just showed you all of those rain showers that are happening across portions of the eastern half of the U.S. We are just dry here into the southeast for the most part, and that's where we're going to start off. Mississippi, we're bone dry. We got a few showers and thunderstorms rolling through northeast Alabama, areas east of Birmingham on I-20, out towards Anniston, uh, and into areas just to the west of Atlanta. A couple of showers there on the Emerald Coast this afternoon, but you're seeing a lot more shower and thunderstorm activity along portions of the Big Bend area and down into the I-4 corridor this afternoon. More scattered showers and thunderstorms out into the Carolinas, up into Virginia. And in fact, there's even a severe thunderstorm watch for portions of the Delmarva Peninsula, even into southern and central New Jersey. They can see a couple of strong storms there. Some of those will move towards the Jersey Shore as we go towards the later part of the afternoon. And those storms will be moving into New York City as well. Meanwhile, we got an area of low pressure. You can see it spinning here across portions of Indiana this afternoon near Indianapolis up towards Cincinnati. It's a beautiful day across the northern part of uh, the portion of Wisconsin, but you can see showers and thunderstorm activity flaring up here across the desert southwest into the four corner region and even around Vegas. They're seeing some cloud and a few shower activities there. But meanwhile, uh, the coast of uh, Oregon up into Washington state, the weather is looking good over there over the next couple of days. Now, obviously, we're going to watch that system move across Florida and uh, the future cast is showing that very well. This will be dumping a lot of heavy rain for them as we go into the next couple of days and it's really going to be moving slowly. So you're going to see those colors really flare up here. Take a look. We see the uh, we see portions of the orange, the reds, even a little bit of pink here showing up into the Carolina. So this system will be dumping a lot of heavy rain for them. We're going to stay dry here across Mississippi, but they will see more showers basically north of this area of high pressure. You can see them trailing from Billings out in the portions of Minnesota and into Chicago over the next couple of days. But under that area of high pressure, it's going to stay hot. Temperatures into the triple digits as we go into Saturday. Sunday, it's going to be hot. We're going to see a lot of pink on the map. That's temperatures into the upper 90s to low 100s across portions of Oklahoma. And then look what happens as we go into Monday and Tuesday. We start to see that heat dome slide eastward. And even us in uh, Mississippi and Louisiana could be seeing temperatures right at or near 100 degrees. So the heat is going to be on for the next couple of days. And take a look at this footage. This right here is some of the footage that was shown uh, that of storms that rolled through portions of Omaha, Nebraska uh, earlier yesterday. You can see these storms were definitely had packing a punch and thankfully there uh, we don't really have anything else uh, happening. And so that's a little bit of good news there. All right, so let's go ahead and toss it over to our next segment. I guess we're on the 55. Yeah. Yes, okay. Hello, Patrick. So we were talking about a dirty ridge, yeah. right? Obviously, we have certain terms and certain things that break the rules. And of course, let's take a look at what a dirty ridge encompasses. If we will, let's take a look at what's going on. Of course, before we get to the dirty ridge, though, or maybe there you go. See, look, we got magicians, wizards. Well, I'm not a magician. I, I hate to tell you, Patrick. I'm just a meteorologist, not a magician. So let's take a look at something that breaks the rules, right? This is known as a dirty ridge and like Patrick said get your mind out the gutter it's nothing dirty necessarily it's just something that likes to kind of play with us if you will when it comes to meteorology right of course we would know this as a high pressure and high pressure can create sinking air normally you think oh sinking air it quells storm development clouds all together but the exception to the rule about this guy right here is that we kind of have a, a monsoon season that goes on in other portions of North America, right? So, of course, along this ridge here, you can get some of that shower and thunderstorm activity that you see areas out west, the four corners, even into Mexico sometimes. Depending on the placement of this high, you may notice some of those showers and thunderstorms where you typically don't associate them with a high pressure. Now, this is something we really don't see here, but it's something that's characteristic of a wholly different part 
of North America. Of course, normally high pressure, it'll suppress any of those rain chances and any of that storm activity. Remember, because it has sinking air, we normally look for a low pressure system to trigger those rain chances. So there you go. Let's take a deeper dive into what this high pressure is doing, right? High pressure, it's sometimes it's not strong enough, right? It's not strong enough to prevent all of those storms from being quelled, right? Of course, yes, you have that sinking air, but if it's kind of wimping out or it's not really given full bore, if you will, full throttle, of course, you'll notice when some of those showers and thunderstorms do like to show up when the high pressure isn't always doing its job. All right, so you look at our future cast here in Mississippi, and it looks like we'll start off uh, about uh, maybe a tiny chance for showers to the north of us in Meridian, but I don't think we'll get anything here in the Pine Belt. This is 10 o'clock this evening. I don't think we'll get much here in the Pine Belt at all. That dissipates. Now, in the morning, we'll have uh, humid conditions. Temperatures mainly in the 70s. Now, as we look into sat Saturday by 11 o'clock in the morning, we've got pretty much a northerly flow in our neck of the woods. And Saturday afternoon, we we'll see a couple of showers along the coast, but nothing, I don't think, inland here in the Pine Belt. And that is goes through about uh, Sunday morning at about 5 o'clock. Still that northerly flow persists over here in the Pine Belt. All right, here's your lows for tonight. In northern Mississippi, lower 70s. In the central portion of the state, lower to mid 70s. And our neck of the woods will be in the mid to upper 70s across the board. And along the coast, it's going to be in the lower 80s, inland in the upper 70s. Now, your forecast highs for tomorrow is going to be in the uh, 90s all the way across from the, the uh, coast, all the way up into the uh, northern portions of the coastal plain. And then uh, in our neck of the woods, we'll be in the upper 90s for the most part, in the central portion, upper 90s as well. And finally, in the northern portion, low to mid 90s in the forecast for tomorrow. And that's the current look at the forecast. But let me show you the uh, forecast heat indexes for tomorrow. They'll be uh, in the mid to upper 90s, so close to 100. In the central portion of the state, will be at 100 degrees plus, 104 possible in Jackson, 109 in Mendenhall. And our neck of the woods, pretty much the same thing. 111 in Collins, 107 in Hattiesburg, 110 in Columbia. And along the coast, it's going to be the same thing, especially inland. It's going to be like 107 in per Perkinson, uh, Diamond Head, 110, and Gulfport, 109. And that's the current forecast for our neck of the woods. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Nick. Well, uh, um, at Rex, well, we're going to see some hot weather as we go into the weekend. Temperatures are, are going to remain into the upper 90s. But as we go into next week, very little of any rainfall. We're going to stay hot and humid. Temperatures right around 100. In fact, we most likely will tag 100 a couple of days over the next couple of days. And overnight lows are going to remain into the 70s. Well, Nick, I'm not a fan of the 100s. What about you? No, it's rough. But, I mean, as, as you like to say, the air you can wear, right? I was out in Covington County earlier today talking with some folks. And, boy, I tell you, if it wasn't for that slight breeze to give me a break from the heat, it's rough. It really is. I mean, if you stand somewhere and you're in the searing heat and it's 90, 98, 100, whatever it might be, right? At 98, 100, there's not a tremendous difference. It's only two degrees. I know one of them has triple digits, but at the end of the day, if you don't have any sort of breeze or any sort of nearby shade, it really can be a tough situation out there. It really can, and uh, I know, and we always talk about you know, making sure you're staying safe, drinking a lot of water, Absolutely. taking breaks. You know, I always see those people working on the side of the interstate and they're working with had hot asphalt. And that's already way hotter yes. than the environment. And, uh, you know, if you're doing any kind of road work, stuff like that, obviously you're going to be taking advantage, maybe take a couple of shade breaks, get in the cab of an AC truck. Uh, you know, we always see those driving around as well. So, uh, you know, my heart goes out to all the DOT workers. Oh, absolutely. You know, asphalt, concrete, mm -hmm. it all plays a part. Rather, you know, you got like the, the concrete jungle and even, you know, we've seen some airports like Hartsfield over in Atlanta, they get so expansive, so big that it almost affects the temperatures you read on the thermometer. It's almost artificially a little high relative to the actual right. metro or ambient air temperature. So it's amazing when you have a bunch of that concrete or asphalt, it all really, you know, it, it plays a part in warming everything up around you. It really does. And so uh, just be careful if you're doing anything outside this weekend. And also remember your pets, bring them in if you can. If you can't, make sure they have access to shade and to some cool water. Uh, and that way they will be good to go. Well, for Rex Thompson, Nick LaCour, and myself, we thank you for tuning in. We're going to have more news, weather, and sports tonight on WDM 7 News at 5.